How much money do postdoctoral research fellows make? Stick around and find out today on this episode of Navigating Academia. What's up everybody, my name is Dr. J. Phoenix Singh and I want to warmly welcome you to this episode of Navigating Academia, your leading source for guidance on how to advance your career in academia. As always, I appreciate the love, so please do take a second before we get started to like this video, to subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so that you get updates every time we post original content. In addition, be sure to share this video with your friends, with your colleagues, with your students, and take a moment to comment below. In addition, you can follow me at these social media accounts. So, today we're going to be talking about how much money do postdoctoral research fellows make. Now, I remember when I finished my doctorate, I was getting right towards the end there and was trying to figure out what my next step was going to be. Uh, did I want to apply for an assistant professor position? Uh, did I want to apply for a postdoc? And you guys know how it is. When you're in graduate school, oftentimes, you know, you're looking out at all of your friends and who are not in academia, and these guys are making buku bucks. They're consultants, they're in finance, they're in whatever, in private industry. They're making a lot of money relative to what you're making as a graduate student, uh, taking odd jobs, being a TA, etc. You're just not making any money. So a lot of the times, you know, when you're finishing up, you feel to yourself like, you know, I've really put in my effort. Now I deserve to make a lot of money. And obviously the operationalization of a lot of money is going to differ for all of us. But we certainly want to be making more than we made when we were graduate students. This happened to me as well. Now I knew that being an assistant professor, I was probably going to make more money than being a postdoc. But there are so many benefits of doing a postdoctoral research fellowship. And I'm going to make another video for you that is specifically about that and link it in the description below about the three key benefits of being a postdoctoral fellow in terms of making that consideration, that decision as to whether or not you should even do one or not. But I would recommend that you do a postdoc. For me, they were two of the most fulfilling years of my entire professional career and arguably of my life. It was such a great time. I lived near my grandparents. I worked with some of my heroes in the field. I started a variety of projects that ended up developing literally, I think, dozens of publications over the years. Uh, so it was really a very fulfilling time for me. Uh, and so it's something that, if nothing else, I would recommend considering. But a lot of people wonder financially, how much money are you going to make? Which I think is a fair question to ask. So what I did for us is that I went online and I took a look at different online aggregation websites. So these are websites that kind of crawl the internet, as they say, taking a look for different salaries of people with the title of postdoctoral research fellow all throughout the United States. Now, again, this is only in the US, but certainly I can say that based on my experiences with colleagues in other countries, this is pretty par for the course, I would say. Sometimes you end up buying higher, sometimes you end up buying lower. So based on Indeed, Glassdoor, and Payscale, these three different aggregators, uh, the average annual postdoc salary is between $45,000 to $55,000 a year. Most of the numbers that I ended up seeing for different positions were between about 48 to 52K, but I want to give you a little bit of a, of a wider range because there were some as low as 45 and some that were higher. Uh, but that's just the average, and there's four variables that really mediate how much you're likely to make as a postdoc. Uh, I can tell you that you know now, at the time of making this video, it's been seven, year, uh, seven or eight years since I finished my postdoctoral research fellowship and got Got my first uh, formal academic appointment. And since that time, the salary really hasn't gone up that much. It has gone up a little bit, you know, about 10%. Uh, but that's really kind of just adjusted for inflation, uh, arguably. Uh, so I'm, I'm not really surprised at that, to be honest. But let's go ahead and take a look at, uh, at these four different variables. Variable number one is the field that you're in. So for example, you will make more money if you are in something like engineering or medicine than you will in something like doing a postdoc in English literature or art history. It has nothing to do with the worth of you as an academic being in one of these fields versus not. Oftentimes what it has to do with uh, is are you making something 
that is heavily monetizable. So for example, if you're doing an engineering postdoc and you're working on your know, laser-based research, which one of my uh, very good friends ended up doing in his postdoc, he ended up working in a lab that had really massive contracts with the U.S. Department of Defense. So there was a lot of money that was available and that helped them to be able to attract the highest quality postdocs from places like you know MIT and Caltech and these really amazing engineering universities. Uh, and they brought people in from overseas, etc. They were able to get the cream of the crop and one of the ways they were able to market to them was to say, hey, look how much money we can throw at you. Because it wasn't the department's money, and we'll get to that in another variable, it wasn't the department's money. Right? The money was actually coming from grants, but we'll talk about that more in a moment. But that's that question. What field are you in? Because this is going to be associated with, uh, with how monetizable what you're developing as a postdoc ends up becoming. Variable number two is the university at which you're doing a postdoc. Uh, now, for me, when I was trying to figure out where to go, the more, most important thing to me is who I was going to be working with. Not the name of the university, uh, not something where you know we had an amazing sports team or something like that. I was very interested in identifying specific scholars that I really wanted to be like. Uh, and for me, there was no better program than at the University of South Florida. There's this place called the Florida Mental Health Institute and Department of Mental Health Law and Policy. And so, you know, I've even been asked before, it's like, you know, Oxford is this big name. University of South Florida is a big name kind of in the southeast of the United States. You know, it's a really big research university, but, you know, it's not a Harvard or a Yale or something like that. Uh, to me, that didn't matter at all. And in fact, I'm very confident that the experience I had in the department is better than I ever would have had at a Harvard or Yale, etc. Because I was going for the people, and we had the best people in the United States when it came to my part of the field. And the postdoc set me up because when I would go to conferences, people wouldn't say, where did you do your postdoc to find a big name? They would say, where did you do your postdoc? So that they would say, oh, I know John, he works in that department. Or I know Susan, she works in that department. How is that old so and so? Blah 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 blah. That's how it works in academia. It's a, it's a really kind of you know small small world with a few big players. You want to go to a postdoc where you've got at least a couple of those big players. But obviously, in terms of the universities, you're going to have some that are at private universities versus public universities. Usually private universities will end up paying more unless your public university is what's called an R1 university, which is a research one university, meaning that the majority of money that is funding the department uh, is not something that's coming from students and tuition, this is money that is externally coming from grants, be it from the government or from nonprofits or you know just different grant funding bodies. Uh, and so because of that, there tends to be a lot more money floating around, meaning that you can actually fund postdocs and to get better ones, you offer more money as part of your package. Also, one thing, at different universities, you're going to be expected to, to fulfill different responsibilities. So for example, let's say that not only are you expected to, you know, develop and you know work on your own research program, but we also want you to be teaching courses. Uh, a lot of postdocs, if you're in a clinical field, so for example, clinical psychology, because that one's close to home for me, you know, as part of this postdoc, you're expected to be doing clinical work, either in a clinic that is affiliated with the university, maybe even on the university campus, uh, or you know, getting hours for your own licensure. There are so many different clinical opportunities at some universities, it's fantastic. But that's also something where uh, at times, and I've certainly seen this, that clinical work, the money that you're earning from that is built into your postdoc salary. So usually you'll get more for that kind of a postdoc than you will for something where you're, let's say, only doing research, no teaching. And this is what I was doing. I was doing no teaching. Uh, I had you know, a summer uh, intern that I supervised, two of them who were just a delight, um, and you know, and these are things that you can do, but it's not a formal expectation. And so, this is going to determine, or it's going to play into, how much you end up making as well.
And finally here is where are you actually doing the postdoc in terms of the country, right? So where is this university? You know, uh, I obviously am based in the States. Is it in the USA? Is it international? Uh, if you're doing a postdoc internationally, all of these things still apply, but certain countries are going to pay you much more and certain countries are going to pay you a whole lot less depending on where the university is based. And this has to do with, you know, any number of things from, you know, just how much the dollar ends up uh, you know, converting to, right, in terms of just monetarily speaking. So you may be making a lot based on, you know, for example, if you're in Ukraine, right, the average salary of somebody who's working in Ukraine is about $4,000 a year, right, as opposed to in the United States, average family income is obviously, you know, 10 times that. So, you know, that's something important to take into consideration. But then obviously you've got other countries where the dollar does not go as far somewhere like, let's say, a Switzerland or a Norway or a UK, uh, where in some cases you can end up getting even more as a postdoc. So that's just something that, you know, you may want to take into consideration. Variable number three I mentioned before is the funding source for your postdoc. Where is this money coming from? In some cases, it's from the department itself. Uh, each department in a university can be allocated a specific amount of money that they can decide what they're going to spend it on. And in some cases, they want to spend it on attracting a really talented postdoctoral uh, student. And in that case, that's where that money's going to come from and that's quite you know, inflexible. You're not going to end up making way more or way less. You're not going to be able to negotiate up or down. You just kind of take the position because that's what's in the departmental budget. But if you're at a research university where there's a lot of grant money that's coming in, then it may end up being something where you can make quite a bit more. And again, if you're in a field like medicine or engineering, this is something where not only are you more likely to have you know grant money coming in, but a lot of grant money. Versus in something like psychology, for example, you may get a grant, and if it's something from like National Institute of Mental Health in the States, and I IMH, that could be a lot of money. But if it's from, let's say, uh, you know, a, a charity or a, a small nonprofit. So, for example, I've worked on uh, grants before uh, that are specifically on suicide and self harm, and they're being funded by families that very unfortunately lost a family member to suicide. And because of that, they've created a foundation and they're funding research to be able to predict and prevent future acts of suicide and self harm. But obviously, the amount of money that's coming in that's going to be funding something like this is way less than something like an NIMH. So one of the things you can do is take a look at faculty members you're interested in working with in a postdoctoral department and take a look at what grants they currently have. This will give you a general sense of you know whether or not there's a lot of money that's kind of flowing in or flowing out. I'm sure that by talking to people in the department as well, you'll kind of get a sense at you know kind of how the department is doing in terms of grant funding. So that's variable number three. And finally, variable number four is the length of the postdoc. Postdocs really vary in terms of their length. I've seen ones as short as one year and as long as seven to 10 years, but usually it's between one to five years uh, in a field like mental health, so in psychology, it's usually two to three years is what I found across the board. Uh, but regardless of the length, usually there is some kind of grading system where you'll get predictable raises. So for me, I think I got like a $1,000 or $2,000 raise after my first year, uh, which definitely, you know, at the time, as a, a doctoral student, I was making like no money. So the fact that I was making a salary doing something that I loved, period, was like, oh my gosh. Um, but and you know, to make a couple extra thousand dollars, this was just like a dream. You know, I could, you know, fly back up to Virginia to see my folks a couple more times, and all of my friends in Boston, I could fly up. So it was it was a great experience for me, the postdoc, and obviously every little bit helps. But if you're doing something over seven to ten years, you do not want to lock in a single salary that's never going to shift over seven to ten years, right? And that makes sense. So that's something that hopefully you can negotiate. All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching this episode with me. I want to hear from you in the comments below. Were you surprised at how much the average postdoctoral research fellow makes? Have you already done a postdoc? If so, maybe you're willing to share your salary with us and where you did your postdoc. Obviously, you want to make sure that that information isn't confidential, but in most cases, of course, it won't be. If you've already completed a postdoc, what was your experience like? Would you recommend that other scholars do one as well? Comment down below and let us know about your experiences. And as always, if there's a topic that you want to see us tackle on a future episode of Navigating Academia, post that down below as well so that we can work on that for you, because that's what we're here for. 
Don't forget to like and share this video with your friends, with your colleagues, with your students, and follow us on social media. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one career mentoring for something like being able to get you into your dream postdoctoral program, or trying to decide which one is right for me in your field, then please do set up a one-on-one -on -one complimentary coaching call via the website below so that we can actually talk about it. All right, y'all, I'm signing off. Have a great day, and don't forget to get out there, take chances, and be your best self. Thank you so much for stopping by, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here, as always. If you enjoyed this video, and you'd like to see more in this series on navigating academia, please click on one of these links over here to be able to view more original content. I hope to see you there.